This video is going to be a bit of a mind boggler, if that makes sense. And it's going to be a weird one. But I want to tell you that nothing matters. Everything is meaningless. Because if you look at things from an autistic point of view, like you just look at things to an extremely realistic point of view, does anything matter? Does anything truly matter? And the simple answer to that is no. Because everything will come to pass. Everything will change. Everything will soon be forgotten. There's probably some civilization that was on top of the world 4,000 years ago. But now we don't care about them. We don't even know their names. And I'm not saying this to make you lose hope. I'm saying this so that I can link to my next point about the things that happen, the events that happen to you. They don't matter. Everything, I like to see things as neutral. Whatever happens, let's say a hardship comes to you, a tough time, that hard time is neutral. And I like to see all external events as neutral. The thing that governs whether an event is deemed as good or bad is the mindset of the person experiencing that event. Marcus Aurelius wrote, let any external thing that so wishes happen to those parts of me which can be affected by its happening. And they, if they wish, can complain. I myself am not yet harmed unless I judge this occurrence something bad and I can refuse to do so. The last sentence is very important because he says, unless I judge this occurrence bad, it cannot do any harm to me. So that shows that how you view situations, how you view the situations that life has put you in, determines what they are. There's no situation that's inherently bad. Because realistically, right, I'm going to give the worst example ever. Let's say your father dies, right? Your father dies. Oh, you're sad. My father's gone. So if most people would agree that, like, ah, oh, your father dying is sad. But there's someone, let's say they're in the royal family and their father dies, they'll be happy because now they're able to rise to the crown. Now they're able to become king. So that shows that situations, right, any external situation, anything that happens is not inherently bad or good. It is just how you interpret it, just how you choose to view the situation. Another light-hearted example that I can give is, let's say, losing weight. Losing weight is just an event, it's just a thing that happens. But whether you deem losing weight good or bad it depends on whether you're bulking or cutting. If you're cutting, losing weight is like the best thing ever. If you're bulking, you're like, oh, flip, why am I losing weight? But the truth is, it doesn't matter. It's just your interpretation of the event, your interpretation of the circumstances that affects how you believe it is. And the reason why this video is titled You Have All the Power in the World is because if you learn the skill of interpretation, the skill of viewing things from a different angle, not many things will be able to hurt you. You will actually become a mountain. Now I want you to visualize mountains. Mountains, they just remain there like Mount Everest. Whether it's snowing, whether it's raining, whether the sun is shining, blistering its surface. A mountain doesn't move, a mountain isn't changed. A mountain remains put, it remains firm in itself. And I feel like, and I know mountains don't have minds, but if mountains had minds, they would know that, you know, nothing can hurt me. And it's only my interpretation of these things because everything will pass, everything will move on. So the fact that everything will move on shows that the mountain shouldn't be disturbed by the thing. The mountain shouldn't interpret that situation as good or bad. It is just, that whatever is happening is just that if it's raining it's just rain if it's snowing it's just snow it's not good or bad it's just what it is and the funny thing is right if you tell yourself that you don't care and it doesn't matter and you sincerely believe that then it won't matter to you and you won't care like realistically you won't care we apply meaning to things that have no meaning like let's say all of us we watch football and your team loses, right? Let's I, I support Man United, so my team loses quite frequently. But every season there comes a point where I'm like, you know what, I don't care. This I will not let this affect me. And it doesn't affect me. But before that point, I always attach meaning, I always attach there's always some sort of attachment towards the results. I'm like, ah, oh, oh Man United lost, and I'm just sitting down and I'm like, oh damn, Man United lost. But as soon as I decide that, you know what, I don't care. And yes, I will still support them, but I will not let their, that result affect me. Guess what? The result doesn't affect me. We bring meaning to utterly meaningless things. And I'm not saying don't have meaning in your life. Having meaning is amazing. It provides you a sense of purpose. But attaching meaning to meaningless things will only hurt you in the long run. It will be injurious to your mental health. I want you to know that you have the power to decide which things affect you. And you won't be able to master the school straight away. You won't be able to suddenly become a person that can be like, no, I'm not going to let that affect me. But in due time and with practice, you will be able to do it. And honestly, something bad could happen to you. You could go through one of the worst times in your life and you'll be like, no, it will not affect me. And if it does affect you, 
you'll be able to channel all that anger, channel all that pain into something and you'll become a man of no limitations. Either way, if you master the skill of interpretation, the skill of looking at the positive side or looking at things as if they're neutral, you will become a man of no limitations. And I'll leave you with another quote by Marcus Aurelius. The directing mind does not disturb itself. For example, it does not frighten itself or lead itself to desire. If anyone else can frighten it or cause it pain, let him do so. Of itself, of its own judgment, it will not deliberately turn to such modes. The body should take care, as far as it can, to avoid harm. The sensual soul, which feels fear or pain, should say if it does so. But that which makes general assessment of all these things will not suffer at all. It will not itself rush into any such judgment. Of itself, the directing mind is without needs, unless it creates a need for itself. In the same way, it is untroubled and unhindered, unless it troubles or hinders itself.